Hello and welcome to today's lesson on two proportion hypothesis, test, hypothesis testing. Today's objective, by the end of this lesson, I will understand how to conduct a two proportion hypothesis test and write a conclusion statement for that. So we're looking at all the steps that we need for full credit AP scoring on a two proportion hypothesis testing problem. Okay, staying with our theme of this unit, we're looking at our poll question. Is college worth the cost from a Gallup poll that was recently conducted? And what we're going to study today is does the amount of student loan debt have a significant effect on an individual's response to that question? Okay, once again, we're back to the assumptions piece. Okay, we always have to test and verify our assumptions in the situation. Um, we have 2,940 of the 6,000 randomly selected students with no debt and 3,440 of the 8,000 randomly selected students with $1 to $25,000 of debt answered that they strongly agreed that college was worth the cost. Okay, now when we're looking at our assumptions, first thing we want to do is look at is it a random sample? So we have two random samples stated in problem. Okay, so we verified that first assumption. Remember when we talk about independence, sample size times 10 is your sample uh, smaller than 10% of the population. So we use our 10N calculation. So for our first one, 6,000 times 10 equals 60,000, okay, which would be less than the population of alumni with no debt. Okay, then we have to look at our second group, sample size of 8,000 times 10 is 80,000, okay, which is less than the population with $1 to $25,000 of student loan debt. Okay, so we have independent samples. And then remember, we always have to have a third piece of independence, no debt, and $1 to $25,000 of debt are independent of each other. Okay, so we have those two independent groups overall. And then we always want to look at our normal sampling distribution. So we have to do our n times p, n times 1 minus p for both groups. So we're going to have to find those individual values proportionally. And the nice part is this calculation is actually done with the number that we have right now. We know that n times p is 2940. We know that n to p2 is 3440. Okay, so then we just have to finish up n times 1 minus p. Okay, is that leftover proportion? Okay, so we have 3,060 to get us to our 6,000 overall. And then the 3,440 has to build together to be 8,000. So we've got 4,560. to finish up that piece for N2, 1 minus P2. Okay, so in this situation, all of our assumptions have been verified. So we know that this is going to be a very good, solid answer that we can trust. Okay, now, when we're looking at what we need for full credit, you have to verify your assumptions. Now we're looking at our hypotheses. And when we're doing a two-sample problem, we can either compare the two samples to each other or we can look at the difference like we do with a confidence interval. So you can pick which one you want to use. Okay, remember your 
tail or your probability is based on what is stated in the question. Are they doing a less than or greater than comparison? Or do they just say differs? And in that case, we have to have a two-tail probability. Okay, so when we look at our values, okay, we've got 49% of students with no debt thought it was worth the cost. And then when we look at our next group, we've got 43% for our other group. Okay, so now when we're writing our hypotheses in this situation, notice that there are no numbers in your Nolan alternative. What you have to do is you have to state what the values equal overall. Okay, now once we've set up and built our Nolan alternative, doing the comparison between the two groups, and remember, your sign here could be different if you flipped your two groups around, they don't have to be in this order, but make sure that your sign for the alternative matches the values you have. Okay, now, in this situation, one thing we have to do is it's called a pooled standard deviation, and it's based on our assumption with the null hypothesis. Okay, since we assume that the proportions are equal, what we have to do is actually combine our sample values to get a pooled proportional value. Okay, since we're saying that they're equal, we need to find an equal to proportion, which takes into account the different sizes of the two samples. So we have to put those together. Now the good news is this is on your formula sheet. The pooled formula is the bottom. So when you look at your two formulas for standard error in a two sample situation, you're going to look to that lower one for the pooled formula. Okay, once again, from our formula sheet, we're building our proportions. Okay, notice we're finding the difference of the two. The good news here, P1 minus P2 is zero. So that doesn't have any effect on our overall calculation when we plug our values in. And remember, for full credit, you have to show your Z calculation and your probability statement. And we can see in this situation, okay, probability of approximately zero when we type it into the calculator and find our value. And remember what that p-value represents. The probability if the random samples are truly equal, you would get the difference that we see here in this situation. After we go through our calculations, the very last thing that we have to do is write our conclusion statement. Remember the three things that you need, and then we build that conclusion based on our evidence. Okay, p-value of approximately zero, less than our significance level. We reject the null hypothesis. You don't need context here in this situation. You just have to have context somewhere in the problem. And it's usually easier to put it in your alternative support statement. This evidence supports the alternative hypothesis, which states the proportion of 06 to 15 grads with no debt that strongly agree their education was worth the cost is greater than the proportion of students with some debt in that situation. Okay, pretty short lesson here. Okay, problems from your in-class homework packet. Uh, problems five and six have the two sample testing situation. So we're going to go through and finish those up, and then we'll start looking at the review for the unit. Have a good day.